Okay, station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we're ready for the event. U.S. Department of Education, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Arnie Duncan, and we have some fantastic students here from Deal Middle School and Hart Middle School. We're at the Department of Education in Washington, D.C. Do you hear me okay? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thanks so much, and welcome to the crew of the International Space Station, Commander Wheelock, Flight Engineer Walker, and Flight Engineer Kelly. Our students are ready and eager to hear from you. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And the first question will come from Sophia Clayman of Deal Middle School. And Sophia, you're up. My name is Sophia, and my question is for Doug Wheelock. What kind of research are you working on, and how will it help us understand our planet and the universe? Hi, Sophia. Well, that's a great question, and that's uh, the purpose, uh, the, the prime purpose while we're here on the space station is to operate these laboratories. We have, at any one given time, over 130 experiments going on on board. We're studying, studying the Earth, uh, studying space, studying our bodies and our, our bodies' reaction to uh, to being in space and long duration, and uh, trying to learn a little bit more about uh, material development and development of, uh, of medicine and pharmaceuticals and things like this. And so, so what we're trying to do is, uh, is operate these laboratories in the absence of gravity. And when we take gravity out of the equation, some, sometimes some wonderful things happen. Uh, things uh, uh, like crystals grow in, uh, in three dimension now rather than in two dimension like we, we have on Earth. And uh, we can, uh, through this process, uh, develop new, new processes of developing materials and uh, developing pharmaceuticals uh, to help us in the areas of medicine. And also, in, in the process of doing that, we're staying long duration on board the space station, sort of replicating a transit time to another, uh, another body in our solar system, be it Mars or the moon or, or an asteroid or something. And so we're using ourselves as test subjects as well to determine how we can uh, uh, survive and, and thrive in an environment away from gra Earth's gravity for a long period of time. Thank you. My name is Gary, and my question is for Shannon Walker. How do you communicate with other crew members if people are from different countries? Here, that's a good question. Um, one thing we have to do is learn different languages. Uh, another thing is we generally speak English aboard the space station. But I can assure you when I was studying in Russia to be the co-pilot of the Soyuz, I had to learn the Russian language so I could communicate with the Russian uh, control center in Russian. So basically we learn lots of different languages. My name is Alex, and my question is for Scott Kelly. Do you have any free time? And if so, what do you do to entertain yourself? Well, hi, Alex. Um, we do have a little bit of free time. You know, we're normally very busy up here, and most of our, our uh, working day, and even sometime in the evenings and on the weekends is spent working because there's so much to do. But... Uh, on that, uh, on those occasions where we do have some free time, there are certain things we do to entertain ourselves. One, and I think most space stations crew, mem crew members would agree, the, the best one is actually to look out at planet Earth because it is uh, so truly beautiful from this vantage point. And uh, because we fly around it every 90 minutes, we get to, uh, you know, experience uh, seeing places on Earth uh, from a distance that we might not get to experience uh, you know, if we travel there someday, and it's a it's a really interesting perspective to look at Earth above the uh, atmosphere. It's a very very beautiful planet, and uh, you know we're all fortunate to have it. Also, um, 
you know, we have to exercise a lot on board, and most crew members really enjoy doing that because normally uh, flying around in microgravity, you don't get a whole lot of exercise like you might, uh, you know, just walking around uh, on Earth. So exercise becomes very important to us. We, uh, we have a bunch of movies we can watch. Uh, we listen to music, uh, read. Um, so a lot of the things that you would do on Earth for entertainment, we also do here on the International Space Station. My name is Deontay, and my question is for Doug Wheelock. What is the International Space Station meant to accomplish? Hi, Deontay. Well, that's a very good question. And um, that's our primary purpose here is to operate this laboratory. We're a world-class laboratory, and uh, we offer an, a unique environment up here. Uh, inside of the station, we can, um, we can offer an environment where uh, we remove gravity from the equation and all these scientific uh, studies in, in the areas of research of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, medical, uh, uh, biological experiments, and things like this. And uh, also, we have outside of the space station uh, means to conduct experiments out in the vacuum of space as well. So, uh, so we're gathering all this science uh, for our uh, uh, for our scientists on the, on the Earth and uh, and and plan to return uh, great scientific discoveries in the area of pro in increased or in, uh, more efficient processes, uh, better materials, uh, be better pharmaceuticals to help our uh, life on Earth uh, be much much better. My name is Gus Marquant, and my question for Shannon Walker, and my question is for Shannon Walker. How is food on Earth different from food in space? Uh, yeah, Doug just said it was tastier, and in some sense that's true. The main difference between food on Earth and food in space is so much of what we have up here is dehydrated. It takes a lot of fuel to get uh, water up into space because water is actually relatively heavy. So we remove the water on the ground and um, launch the food which is dehydrated into space. So that is one of the biggest differences that we have. And so you ask, well, what do you do? We've got uh, water up here. Where does that come from if we're not launching it? We actually make water. When the shuttle is on uh, attached to the station, we can get water from the shuttle because they make that as a, as a, a product for making electricity on the shuttle. So we get uh, water from the shuttle, and then we also make water here on the space station. My name is Nicholas, and my, my question is for Scott Kelly. Have you ever had a problem or been injured while in space? I, th I think your question was, have we ever had any uh, problems uh, here in space, um, like potentially maybe... Uh, you know, a problem with a system or with, uh, you know, one of the crew members medically. Um, we do occasionally have, uh, you know, problems with the systems. Just uh, about an hour ago, we had a warning uh, go off in the Russian segment of the system, that, uh, of the space station, that said there was a uh, low level of oxygen in the, uh, in the Russian, um, what's called the, the, FGB or functional cargo block. It's one of the Russian modules, and it said the oxygen was very, very low, like you know maybe 10% of what it should normally be. And uh, fortunately, that wasn't a, a real emergency. It was just a sensor. But uh, yeah, we do have uh, more uh, serious things happen at times. When before I got here, we had the, a failure of a pump that's very important to cooling the outside of the space station, and. Uh, so, um, you know, we do occasionally have things go wrong, but we have ways to uh, respond to those, and, and so far we've been uh, pretty good at it. My name is Will, and my question is for Doug Wheelock. What is the most beautiful thing you have ever seen from space? Uh, 
Well, that's a great question, and uh, and uh, the most beautiful thing is my crewmate Shannon. <laughs> um, uh, well, actually, I think probably everyone would agree the most beautiful thing that we can see from the space station is our planet, and um, and of course there are so many different things uh, to see about our planet, both in daytime and nighttime. You know, when I first came up here, I thought, and you know, I first got a chance to look at the Earth. The Earth is like an explosion of color in this uh, in this big sea of darkness uh, that space uh, that we know, and um, and what you know I I. I thought about what it would be like to go into eclipse and come on the backside of the Earth when the Earth was in darkness. That it, I thought, well, probably it would just blend in with the darkness of deep space. But, but no, the uh, the Earth at night as well is is just alive with uh, with life and with motion, and uh, we get to see uh, lightning and aurora and uh, the city lights, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So I'll have to say that. Um, of my most beautiful sight so far of the Earth has been uh, uh, back a, a couple of months ago, I believe it was in July or August, uh, we were able to see the southern lights, the aurora over the, uh, over the South Pole. And we actually had a night where the moon was full and the sun was coming up and we had this beautiful aurora and the moon was shining was shining off the aurora as was the sun the rising sun and so it was pretty it was pretty dramatic and very just a beautiful beautiful picture out the window and we all were glued uh, glued to the window that night My name is Shaquana, and my question is for Shannon Walker. Do you feel like your personality or the way you think changes while you are in space? Shaquana, that is a very interesting question, and to be honest, I've never really thought about it. I think I'd have to ask my crewmates to see if they think that I have changed while I've been in space. I don't think I've I've changed or my personality have changed or how I think uh, through things has changed, but I think my crewmates would probably be the final judge of that. <laughs> my name is Amilka Hudson and my question is for Scott Kelly. Do you feel like your job is dangerous? Well, you know, flying in space is, uh, is somewhat dangerous. You know, we're flying around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour in a, uh, you know, almost near vacuum. And uh, uh, to get here uh, requires an uh, incredible amount of energy to get going that fast. And... Uh, you know, to get home, we have to remove that energy out of the vehicle, whether it's a Soyuz or a, a space shuttle. So, um, you know, it is risky and uh, and somewhat dangerous, but, um, you know, the different uh, government agencies, whether it's NASA or the other uh, partners on the International Space Station, work really, really hard to make it as safe as, as we possibly can. So, um you know, it has risk, but normally doing uh, great things have um, always uh, involved risk. So, um, you know, even though it's dangerous, I'm uh, happy and uh, proud to be a part of it. My name is Ayana, and my question is for Doug Wheelock. How does your body feel in space, and is it very different from on Earth? Hi, Ayana. Um, yes, it is very different than on Earth, and um, it actually feels a little strange when you first get here to space. Um, your your body, of course, everything is floating, and so uh, in the in the fluid in your inner ear, uh, sort of pulls and stops uh, the rotation and so it's uh, so your sense of balance and up and down is a little bit confused and so the first couple of days up here in space it's a little confusing it can be a little disorienting especially when you're coming into a module you see around us here we've got experiments on the ceiling on the floor on the walls it doesn't matter where because because we have no gravity so we can use all the available surface space here and when you come into a module um, it's 
say upside down or something like that, it'll be, um, uh, it would be uh, a little bit misorienting at first. And so, but your body adapts and you, um, you know, very, very simple things are, are hard at first. Uh, brushing your teeth, um, drinking water out, or flu, uh, some sort of drink out of a bag, eating food. Uh, sleeping, you know, all these are very, very simple things that we don't think about on Earth, uh, but you have to rethink those things and relearn how to do those things uh, once you come to space. And and now, after being here for so many days and so many weeks and months, it's uh, it's hard to think back and remember uh, life with gravity. But we're gonna get a. Uh, we're going to uh, see that uh, big time uh, at the end of this week when we return to the planet, Shannon and I, uh, with, along with our crewmate, Fyodor. Uh, but um, it is a little bit different on the body. Uh, the body feels uh, quite quite different when you get here to space, and uh, and we'll make the same, uh, very similar adjustment when we get back to gravity. It's a great question. My name is Matthew, and my question is for Shannon Walker. How long did you train before going into space? Matthew, great question. We actually trained a really long time before going into space. When I first became an astronaut, I trained for two years, uh, learning how to, or learning about the shuttle and the space station and learning all the systems. And then when I was assigned to this particular mission, I trained for three years before I, I was finally launched into space. Thank you. My name is Alyssa, and my question is for Scott Kelly. What inspired you to become an astronaut? Well, Alyssa, I, uh, when I was a kid, it was definitely something I was interested in. Um, you know, like a lot of kids are interested in doing things like, you know, flying in space or, you know, other challenging, uh, you know, endeavors. Um, but it wasn't really until later when I was a pilot in the United States Navy and I become a te became a test pilot that I actually thought it was something that was, was achievable for me. And, uh, you know, as a pilot um, in the military, uh, for me, it just seemed like the next most challenging type of flying, and uh, that's when I really got serious about it. My name is Elizabeth, and my question is for Doug Wheelock. Do you have a telescope on board? And if so, what can you see through it? Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. Good question. Uh, we do not have a telescope on board, but we have uh, very, very powerful uh, camera lenses and some binoculars and things that we use. Um, very great. Uh, we have a wide range of, uh, of camera lenses on board. And um, then um, at the, uh, uh, towards the end of, actually, the beginning of next year, um, there'll be a space shuttle launching with a, uh, with a, with a very powerful telescope on it. Um, that will go on the outside of the space station. They'll be used uh, for scientists uh, on the Earth uh, to study our to study our universe. And um, but on board, we just have very very powerful cameras that we can see uh, very fine detail on the on the planet Earth. I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to uh, spend with our students. Again, this is just fascinating. I, I look forward to this so much each year. And I have a, a buddy of yours sitting next to me, Leland Melvin. I wanted him to just say hello to you, and then we'll close out and let you guys get back to work. Thanks. Hey, Wills, Miss O'Malley, and Scott. It's really great to see you guys up there, and I'm really proud of what you're doing and helping inspire that next generation. So I uh, look forward to seeing you back on the ground. I'll have that cheeseburger ready for you when you, when you get back. You guys take care. Have fun. <laughs> okay, thank, thanks, Leland, and uh, to all the students that are there and the, and the uh, administrative staff and the faculty and teachers that are there. Thank you. Uh, really, really great questions. Uh, it was a real pleasure having you on board the space station with us today. And um, and actually, we wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration here. This is a, a EMU spacesuit, a spacesuit that we use for our spacewalks. 
And uh, this suit on the planet Earth weighs about 300 to 350 pounds. And so you can see how, uh, how, uh, how easy it is to move around here in space. And so uh, our little demonstration with weightlessness in space, but we, the one thing that we have to remember, very, very important in the ways of uh, science, that they, although things are weightless, they still have mass, and we have to be very careful as we move large objects like this around both inside the space station and outside. So whenever you propel an, an object with a certain force, it's going to take an equal and opposite force to stop that object as well. So sometimes it's a hard lesson to learn as well. But thank you for joining us, and have a great day, and, uh, and we'll look forward to talking to you next time. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan and to participants at the Department of Education in Washington, D.C. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications for Scott's event.